Hello and welcome to Inking on the Fly with me, Amy Jasper. It is... what is it? I don't even know. What day of the week is it? I have no idea. It's Monday, of course. Uh, Monday morning and I'm here doing a Facebook Live with you because I love sharing with you so much. So here I am again. Uh, today I wanted to share a card that I created using the quite curvy bundle so uh, is it still bundled maybe it's not anyways the quite curvy stamp set and the quite curvy dies which of course coordinate one one way or the other <laughs> um yeah so this um i believe both of these are retiring soon which is kind of sad but it makes me want to just jump in and try to get some use out of them before they're gone forever um, I really enjoyed making a card uh, for with this set and I had to borrow this set because I don't actually own it kind of sad actually um, but it's retiring so and I know who has it I can borrow it from my lovely friend Terry Hamilton um, as long as she's willing and able to loan it to me that's the great thing about being a one of the many great things about being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is uh, we know lots of people with lots of things <laughs> So, so yeah, it's we we share, we borrow, um, we get inspiration and ideas from one another. So um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Anyways, today I am sharing with you how to make a very cool card. Here is a sample of it. A piano card using the curvy die. How cool is that? So that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, this is a card design uh, that I did share at our stamp camp back in, ooh, what was, was it March? March, January? I don't remember. It was earlier this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, that this is one of the designs I shared at my stamp camp with Desiree Spence. And uh, we're, we have another stamp camp coming up in July. So please, if you are in Canada, please sign up for that stamp camp because it's going to be awesome. That stamp camp is going to be Christmas in July. And so it's all about Christmas cards and getting ready for Christmas. So um, that's it's going to be awesome. Uh, you can find more information about the stamp camp event in on my Facebook page. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can join in on that. So all right, let's get started. So here I have uh, the stamp set and the dies. I don't actually need you to see that anymore because I have those ready to be used when I need them. So again, this is the card that I'll be making, but I'm going to change it up a bit. Well, what? I'm going to add some, just go with some different colors and not change it up that much. Basically, I'm changing the colors. So, you know, don't get too excited. <laughs> Okay, so let me grab all the things I need here. I have them beside me, but we will start. I'll show you what I'm using. So I decided to go with a little bit of a different color scheme. So this card, I have the Bermuda Bay as my card base. This one, I'm going with a basic white card base instead. So let me just push all this stuff off of here. So basic white card base, um, starting at your basic, you know, eight and a half by five and a half and fold it in half to make it a four and a quarter by, oops, a four and a quarter by a five and a half card base. Good morning, Eunice. Glad you could join me. I know you'll probably pop over to Heather after when Heather starts her Facebook Live and that is just fine. I love that you stop in sometimes before then. That's awesome. Uh, so card base folded, great start to things. I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm going to show you the basic kind of piano, the keyboard portion of this card. So I started here with a piece of basic gray card stock. This measures, uh, what is it? One and three quarters by four and a quarter. So it's the full width of the card. And I chose basic gray just because when I do my piano keys, I just want the hint of 
um, shadow between the keys. So I didn't necessarily want full on black. I wanted it to be a little softer. So basic gray or um, gray granite or smoky slate might not be dark enough, but you, you get the idea. Something that gives a bit of a shadow between the keys. So then I have all of these. These are punched with the classic label punch, which I've been using a fair bit lately. So um, I'm getting lots of use out of it. I'm really excited, really enjoying the classic label punch and just how many um, uses it has with such a simple shape. So I punched these. These are basic white and I punched out 11 of these for my 11 keys. So what I'm going to do is attach these with my, just with, with Tombow liquid glue. And this is going to take a bit, so feel free to chat because this isn't gonna be like terribly exciting. I, I hoped, I had hoped that I could have one already done for you and just show you how I did it. But um, I'm gonna, I didn't have a chance to do that before I started my video, so. I am going to do it right before your very eyes. Hi, Cindy. Glad you could join in all the way from Texas. How is the weather down in Texas these days? Is it is it hot right now? I have no idea what the weather, I know Texas is humid. Well, maybe not all of Texas, I don't know. I know that um, some of, some actors that I like are in Texas, come out of Texas like Sandra Bullock and the Supernatural Boys, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles, both from Texas. Flash flood warnings in Texas, Cindy, that's not good. Oh man, we went through that here. Um, I don't know if they called them flash floods, but we had a lot of flooding and it was after, what was it, a couple years after some bad forest fires. They seemed to go together that way. So you'll notice that I'm keeping just the tiniest space between each of these keys that I'm placing down. And I'm trying to keep them parallel. I want my keys to be straight, not like my piano, because my piano is old uh, and well used. <laughs> so the keys are not all that straight anymore. Or I don't know, they're just worn out. I need to get it fixed actually, um, not fixed, but well, yeah, fixed. Some of the, it needs to be tuned and some of the um, key, like the, some of the keys have sort of a twangy kind of sound, like maybe they need to be replaced. So yeah, that's always fun. It's a piano, we got it secondhand. Um, and uh, had it tuned when we got it, but tuned by my, my father-in-law who does it more as a hobby. And uh, he doesn't have the skills to really fix this. Some of the strings were difficult to tune. They just wouldn't move. So, so I need to get a professional in its time, I think. So yeah, I might, I'm hoping my spaces aren't too wide. It's uh, sometimes hard to judge, but narrower is better than wider, I think, as long as, well, even if it is wider, if I end up going past my four and a quarter, that's okay, because I can just trim those end, those end keys down. So if my card base was basic gray, I probably, I wouldn't have to do this um, little piece this extra basic gray piece. But I think in some ways it actually makes it a little easier to set everything on um, ahead of time rather than doing it on my card base. So if, if my card base was basic gray, I could probably do this right on the card base. But like I said, I think this is a little bit easier. And looking at this, it has sort of a fence post feel, doesn't it? I want like it, this, these, um, Classic label dies uh, would work as little white picket fence posts, which is kind of cool. But it is, it's a bit time consuming to be putting these all together like this. So I don't know if I would go through the trouble for a fence post, for a fence. Maybe. 
So hopefully I'm still straight. I think I'm doing well. I can see with my grid paper, pretty good. Seems to be straight still. It's coming along. Getting there, two more, I think. If I need to add another one, I might just for, well, just to fill in the space. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Well, maybe it'll be good. It's hard to tell when I get that close. But yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so that one, one more. One more, we're almost there. Hi, Terry. I'm so glad you're here. Terry, I'm using your stamp set and, and die that I borrowed from you. And I'm pretty sure I've given this card to somebody at some point, but I have no idea who or a card like this. Not this card, because I am I have this card in my hand. Hey, look at that. It's pretty good. Almost right exactly to the edge. Look at me go, wah, wah, perfectionism at its finest. Okay, I'm just going to just use this card as a guide to see, yeah, I think we're okay. I might have to trim a little bit, but I don't think so. So there's our, the base of the piano keys, the white keys. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here for a second, make sure I'm doing what I need to do. Okay, so now obviously I don't want my piano to have all these pointy bits. So I'm going to uh, trim those pointy bits off with my paper trimmer. Now I have Stampin' Up's little baby paper trimmer that they don't have anymore, but, and I like it because it's quite precise. Um, so I'm just going to use that to trim the edge off of those little keys. Oh, I gave you the card, Terry. Well, there you go. Now you get to see how in the, how in the heck I made it. Okay, what's happening here? I think I'll trim these. These are hidden underneath the grand piano um, shape but I'm going to trim them anyways because I think it will make it easier when I put the black keys on. Oh, to see where I'm going. There we go. Now we have, I don't know, a crosswalk. <laughs> Looks like a bit like a crosswalk. Okay, so there's our piano keys. Okay, so then, so that's our white keys. Um, referring to my notes again, I made notes, you guys. Well, actually it's because it, this was, I made this card, um, because I made this card for Stamp Camp, I actually, you know, we give it people instructions. So I'm going over my own instructions. That's my notes. So I'm not really that organized. I'm just pretending to be. Okay. So I trimmed that. Do, do, do. Okay, then I can do my black keys. So these black keys are an odd measurement. And I apologize to the people in Stamp Camp for the oddity of it. You can cheat. So I made these keys just like one sixteenth of an inch wider than um, a quarter of an inch. Does that make sense? No. Quarter, yeah. So they are five sixteenths of an inch wide. An odd measurement. So five sixteenths. Um, if I show you on my, this is not a good example. So every, um, where is, I need a pointer. There's a pointer. So every, every space here is a quarter of an inch, these big spaces, right? So in here, each space 
Um, the long one is an eighth of an inch between the this longer space, this longest line, and then this middle line. That's an eighth of an inch, and so this in between is one sixteenth of an inch. So five of those, if you go from here, is so there's a quarter of an inch. So there's four sixteenths. Five sixteenths is just bigger than a quarter of an inch. So you could do, if you're not keen on the crazy one sixteenth inches, then you could get away with a one quarter inch instead. It will look a little bit different. I found that the, the five sixteenths was um, a little more balanced with the size of the white, the white keys. And the white keys, what do they even measure at? They are, I believe, three, yeah. So the white keys are three eighths of an inch. Um, so yeah, so one quarter of an inch you could do, but it just doesn't quite look right, if you know what I mean. Like as far as the actual um, size difference of real piano keys, I guess. I was trying to get close to that. So yeah, all that to say, you can do, you don't have to do the crazy five eighths of an inch or five sixteenths of an inch measurements okay so I'm putting black dimensionals on the backs of my keys here and so these are so I said they're five sixteenths wide but they are um, one and a quarter inches long so I'm just gonna go and pop um, dimensionals on the back of all of my black keys and they fit so nicely don't you think I love the mini dimensionals they really were a good thing that Stampin Up brought out for us so this is the time-consuming part is all of these tiny little pieces that we have to add but if you have a musician or uh, you know a piano person in your life or anybody who appreciates piano um, this is definitely this this is worth it all this extra work All right, do to do, do see time consuming, but hey, only for a video doing this by myself. I'm like, just, you know, you watch a show while you do it, you, and then you, and you assemble. It's all good. But when you're, when you're on camera, you're much more aware of how long things take. Okay. So as you know, on a piano, your black keys go in groups of three, alternating with groups of two, and they are in between. The white keys so um, and they're usually straight <laughs> so we're gonna do our best to make sure that they're straight so I'm gonna use my grid paper in combination with my um, my gray what my in-between lines I don't know what to call them and use that as my guide to make sure that I am straight and I'm going to do my best to be centered so yeah, again, just, just taking your time, making sure things line up. I find, as you know, the grid paper is just really, here, I'm gonna put this one over here and then I can make sure that the middle one's centered between them a little bit more easily. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. I forget what I was talking about. That's just how I do things. Sometimes I forget what you're talking about when you're halfway through your conversation with me. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's a brain problem. I'm working on it. I have to, sometimes I have to really concentrate um, on what people are saying in order to be able to follow. It's a weird, it's not even, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It doesn't happen all the time. 
Anyways, I forgot what I was saying, but it's saying something important, I'm sure. <laughs> Who else is with me? Who else forgets what they're saying when they're halfway through a sentence? I am distracted, right? There's that. I'm trying to concentrate. It's hard to talk and do at the same time. So having the keys, uh, the black keys on dimensionals just adds to that, to the effect of the, like the whole keyboard kind of effect. Hi, Kim. I'm so glad you could pop on too. I love seeing you got your guys' names and having you come on and say hello. Okay, we've got three, two, we need three over here. All right, we're almost done our keys. And this is the most involved part. Oh, thanks, Cindy, the ribbon. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm not using that ribbon for this one. I'm going to use a different ribbon. But yes, that's the, the card that's showing in the bottom left of my screen here is, um, has the pool party sheer ribbon, which is very beautiful and really easy to color. If you want to do a different color, you can use your blends markers and color over the ribbon and you'll get a different, uh, you, you can color it whatever color you want, which is kind of fun. Good to have that option. And it's because it's so sheer, uh, it's really just works with a lot of designs. I really like it. I like, I like ribbon that's not too terribly heavy, you know? Okay, so I think whew, they're all straight. This is good. Dun, da, da, da. I'm playing for, for Elise. <laughs> okay, um, which I used to know how to play, by the way. I, I can't play it anymore. Okay, so then um, I am going to attach this to the bottom of my card base. And sometimes card bases aren't exactly that four and a quarter wide just because when you fold it you know and we cut things it's not we're not perfect all the time right so so I am going to have everything kind of shift to the left so I'm going to make sure it's flush with the fold because I can trim this side so I can have it shift to the left to the right sorry and um, and then trim that because when I when I open the card I don't want to see nibbly bits over the edge there okay so i can attach this with some liquid glue oh yeah kim you were at the spring stamp camp and we did that card that's right so you gave it to a, your choir teacher who was retiring all the kids signed it oh i love that that's perfect that is exactly what this card is for to give to a person who is you know, has that musical, um, those talents. Yes, that's awesome. I love that. I love hearing when people actually give cards to people. Because, <laughs> you know, I make a lot of cards and I love making them. But I sometimes never, I sometimes don't know who to give them to. And so sometimes they don't get given. And eventually I donate them or, or give them as a gift, like a, of a group of cards. But, um, I have a lot of boxes of cards just sort of hanging out. Okay. There's my piano keyboard on the bottom and you can see it's coming off the edge just a little bit. It's hard to see there. Um, so I will trim that and I might might even trim it before I proceed. What else do I want to do? Okay. Okay. So that's our keyboard. Then it's kind of cool on its own. You could almost just put a ribbon here and sentiment up there and be done. But we're going to add the actual piano kind of shape. So this I cut with the curvy dies. So this particular die here 
So the cut edge is on one side and the, and the holes, the dots are on the other or on a certain, so you want to make sure when you cut it, if you want the dots that you cut it so that the cutting edge is above the dots. So like that. Um, if you don't want dots, you could turn it this way, but then look at that's not the shape of the piano, is it? So that's why that doesn't work as well. So we're doing it that way. So I use that. So that's in my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, of course. Uh, and this was is four and a quarter wide, and it was only four and one eighth high. And you could probably go like shorter if you wanted. You could do four. You could do quite short. So it doesn't have to be four and one eighths, but that's what I did. Four and one eighths by four and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to make sure that that lines up first because, so I think it's going to end up needing to be trimmed as well, maybe. I don't know. I think I'll trim this now while I'm thinking of it. Just make sure that that little edge will be hidden. So I can use my baby paper trimmer or I could use just paper snips and just cut that edge, which I'm going to do actually, just because it's such a, it's kind of awkward. So I'm just going to use my paper snips and just trim that. So when you, when you trim something like this with your paper snips, you can um, usually kind of press the, um, the blade of the paper snip against your card base as your guide and just really um, keep that pressed against your card base while being very careful because you want that still to be straight and that works good awesome okay and this one I'm just going to make sure again that it is because I can't trim this one after it's on because it's going to have ribbon on it but I think it's it's pretty good but a little just needs a little trim so this is a little harder because it's not attached, right? I just want to make sure that it's not going to stick out the edge. So I'm just holding it very carefully and trimming it. There we go. Okay. Paper snips to the rescue. Woo woo. Okay. So then um, on my original card, I used well, my very, very original card, I actually used celebration, a celebration pattern paper. But this one here is from the uh, Fine Art Floral Designer Series paper. I don't even think that's what it's called. They throw all these names at us. Now I'm going to have to look. You know, because there's Fine Art, Fine Art Floral and Floral Gallery. It's in the back of the catalog. Fine Art, oh, I was right. Fine Art Floral Designer Series Paper is this one here that I used, which I love the, I love the um, color wash kind of acrylic paint kind of look. Um, and I used a Bermuda Bay cards, card base. So this one, I'm going to do it a little differently. I have here a new patterned paper. This is Fresh Freesia, which is a new color very pretty and instead of having an, a border all the way around that this like I did on this one I'm going to have this one flush with with the top and side of my card which probably means more trimming <laughs> that's okay um, so I'm going to I can have this slide underneath the keys it's a little bit longer than the space I've given myself and that's okay so I think that will work and I can glue that down with my glue which I for some reason forgot where it was um, 
And I don't often do edge to edge. I like having a border a lot of times with my cards, but I decided to see how this one would look with no border. Meh. Come on you, pop underneath. I'm trying to slide it under the black keys. Come on. Would have been better if I'd actually trimmed this. It doesn't have to be this um, long. So I made this one three and three quarters high this way. So I could have done three and a half and it would have been fine. And in fact, you know, if you look at my card here, much of it's hidden anyways, but you know, you learn these things. Okay, so again, I'm going to have some edge to trim because that's apparently my card base is just not the, not four and a quarter. That is my error, human error at its finest. So again, trimming this edge again. That one's a little quicker, easier to trim because it's um, thinner paper. There we go. All right, we're getting there, you guys. We're getting there. Okay, I think I'm done with my liquid glue. Okay, so now we have a very strange looking card for the moment. That's okay. Let's, um, I'm going to do my stamp next. So this part's a bit scary. So for the stamp, I've chosen to use your one in a million, which is what I used on my this card here I just like sort of the um, generic pre presentation opportunity of this your one in a million could be birthday it could be Father's Day it could be congratulations you know there's so many it just is an appreciation card so um, that I like I like that sentiment so that's why we're going to use that again but there's lots of other options um, thinking of you wishing or, and a birthday and a hooray for you. They're all, those all would work great for this. In fact, any uh, photopolymer stamp that's long can be shaped. So you'll notice that your one in a million is um, curved like that. But the card I did, it's curved differently. So what I did was... I shaped the stamp on the block and I don't want to do it again because it is a bit fussy but I'll show you what I did so you have two choices at this point you can go ahead and put your ribbon on and attach this or you can stamp first and that way you can you know remove this afterwards if you need to and repair any damage that you may cause because it's scary stamping on things sometimes um so i'm just going to lay it on and then what i did was i positioned the stamp as i went so the stamp wants to curve that way and this side would want to curve up so instead of letting it do that i kind of just and thankfully these are really nice and sticky, especially when they're new, but I can position it to how, what curve that I want. So then I have that nice curve. I've got it a little too close to this edge, but I think it's going to be okay. So there, then I have a nice curve in the stamp. And I make sure it's stuck down. Sometimes photopolymer stamps can lose their, they can sort of lose their stickiness. If that happens, I usually take um, just like dish soap and put the plug in the sink or use a bowl or something so you don't lose them down the drain. But then I'll um, give them a wash and a really good rinse with like Dawn dish soap because that will take away any, it's almost like there's like a greasy residue sometimes and I think a lot of times that's from our cleaning, um, our stamp cleaner can leave a bit of a residue. 
So if that gets on the wrong side of the stamp, then you're going to end up, it's not going to want to stick as well. Okay, so I'm going to use Tuxedo Black ink. And I want to make sure it's inked very well because I don't want to have to do this more than once. Lots of ink. And I need to hold down my curve so I get the, because it's not glued down yet. And then I can stamp my sentiment carefully. It is scary, you know. You know it can be scary stamping directly on your card base. So what I could have done too is done the stamping before I attached the um, patterned paper. So I really want to make sure that everything has connected. Da -da -da! Oh, see, I got a little, missed a spot. That's okay. I can probably fill that in with my marker and make that work. So another way to do that would be like in your Stamparatus, right? Because then you can go ahead and stamp it again. So yeah, that's a bit scary. So then I can wrap my coordinating ribbons. So this is the Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. It's so pretty. And in my usual fashion, I have it still attached to the spool so that I'm wasting less ribbon because if you cut it ahead of time most of the time it's too short or it's way too long and you're wasting ribbon one way or the other right so I'm going to do my best to not waste ribbon and I always like I like tying things all the way around but I know a lot of people are really good at doing um, a cheater bow where they have one piece wrapped around and attached it just um, flat at the back and then they tie a bow around that piece on the front. Um, I don't know why I, I just haven't adopted that way of doing it. I like things tied more than glued. Oh, look at that. It's so pretty. This ribbon ties so nicely. Okay. And again, I love the sheer kind ofness of it. So look, no waste okay this much waste that's how much ribbon i've just wasted oh terrible okay so pretty oh my gosh i'm so, i'm really excited about this okay then this is going to have dimensionals on the back and then where did my dimensionals go there they are dimensionals on the back and i'm going to be quite um liberal because this piece has the curve i want to make sure that all points of the curve will be attached well and then i have to be careful when i put this down because uh, if I, any dimensionals i put on this area down here they need to go between the keys understand that because otherwise if I have a dimensional here it's going to go on the black key and make this raise up weird so we don't want that so I'm actually just going to go and put dimensionals between the keys use this to know how far down I can go and here I can only do half of a dimensional no problem I can just trim trim my mini dimensionals to make them more mini and there we go so then we can pull off those backings And all the backings off of here. And 
and put that on make sure it's nice and straight and lining up with the edges and we have a adorable piano card my bow is a little bit crazy big maybe i'll make maybe i'll be wasting more ribbon dun, dun, dun. i just want to make it a little smaller there we go and a piano card is done how cute is that so i can go and and get in there with a marker and clean that up because it didn't stamp quite as evenly as I wanted it to. So I just use, this is basic gray, and this was uh, Tuxedo Memento black ink, but I'm gonna go in with the basic gray just because I don't know, I think my black will be too black. So I've zoomed in, let's zoom in a little more maybe, so that you can see what I'm doing, and then I have to lean in and get close. Maybe I better put my glasses on got my dollar store reading glasses so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just very lightly feeling in, following where I know the lines are. And it's not going to be as good as if I had stamped it well in the first place. Oh, I'm nervous to do this bit. But um, sometimes I just don't want to peel my card apart and go start over. So if this scares you, um, then peeling the card apart and redoing it is a different is another option. Um, or use your stamp apparatus in the first place. Then you can just stamp it again. But I'm not even pressing. Like I'm, it's, this is feather, feather light. All I want to do is fill in that. Ooh, that went a little heavy. I just want to fill that in. And that's already looking better. There, I think I can go with that. So it's not, yeah, so now you can see and I don't even know, maybe my hand was in the way the whole time, but now you can see that that has, now you can read it better and you, it doesn't look like there's been a mistake. And it's fixed. Da -da -da -da. Here are the two different designs um, using the curvy, the quite curvy stamp set and the curvy die, dies to make a piano card. So thanks for watching guys and I hope that you'll join me again next week for my next Facebook Live. And if you're in Canada, make sure you sign up for our stamp camp coming up in July. And um, it's not too late to register for my technique class coming up uh, next week. So have a great week and we'll catch you next time.